Hi, I'm Andrew Berry and welcome to At The Bench and welcome to another product review film. Well, the item that we've got today is this device here. This is a corrugator and the exact name for this particular machine here is a microfold brake. Now, corrugating often is called microfolding, hence the reason microfold brake and a brake because that is the type of machinery that this tool is. It's very sturdily made. The rollers here are corrugated. The bottom one is fixed in position and just revolves around the spindle. The top one here, you can adjust the height of this one to accommodate different thicknesses of metal and that can be accommodated by turning the two screws here on the top. The rollers are 8 inch in length, they're a hardened steel and they're anodized as well which means they are very hard and they are resistant to rusting as well although you shouldn't put wet or damp pieces of metal through it anyway you should always take care that the pieces are completely dry. It's, uh, the rollers are a 24 pitch which means that you'll approximately get eight microfolds per inch or eight microfolds per 25 millimeters and you get roughly around about 60 percent of the starting length of metal that you put through it it's normally less than that if you use a thicker metal it also has locking nuts here where you can just see them on the camera there that once you found the correct the correct depth for the thickness of metal that you're using you turn these lock nuts underneath here and that fixes this top roller in position so it can't go any further uh, very handy if you're doing repetitive work so how do we fasten it down well there are three ways there are two holes in the bottom of the plate here this can be screwed down to a worktop you would do that by removing this end block here by using the thumb screw undo the knob this end bar comes out, the rollers slide out, and then that allows you then to screw down upon to the worktop. It has to be on the edge because you have to allow the handle on the end to turn. Alternatively, you can clamp it with G-cramps or C-cramps, whatever you want to call them, onto your work surface as well. But in this instance, we're going to simply put it into a bench vise. And we're going to bring it away from the rolling mill here it's a little bit close to the rolling mill but I need to be able to turn the handle that's great not the ideal position for this to be in it should be quite central but I'm stuck with a rolling mill so close to the vise all right so now we've got the microfold brake firmly fastened down how do we use it well first of all before you start using the device you have to make sure that there is no excess grease within these rollers here and also what's a good idea is to get an old toothbrush and just come along and go through all the jaws just to make sure there's no little bits of debris that are trapped because if there are any little bits of dirt or little bits of metal every time you come round to corrugate that little piece of dirt or that little piece of, of metal will actually stick into the metal and it'll cause a, a, basically a defect that you don't really want. So go over it with an old toothbrush first of all. The best thing to do then is to calibrate the machine, which sounds very complicated but really is quite straightforward. You've got these two sort of thumb screws, turn screws upon the top here. What you should do is turn them down just gently, each one at a time, until the handle no longer turns. On each sort of thumb screw you've got a little brass collet and this is uh, the calibration you turn that round now so zero comes round right to the front right where you have the zero on the post there and likewise on this one and that zero lines up with the zero on the pillar the post there as well now this enables you to get the correct amount of uh, distance on this top roller. If this top roller was at an angle, when you put the piece of metal through you'll find it won't corrugate correctly. It'll be tight at one end, loose at the other end. That is actually quite a good technique for making sort of fan shapes. We'll come to that again in some other projects. But for now we need to make sure that the piece of material 
the copper in this instance that we put through is going to be corrugated evenly. And we can ensure then by turning these thumb screws exactly the same amount. So for instance, I've done it roughly a quarter of a turn then, and then we've got the, the 60 lined up here and also the 60 lined up there. Notice that these are actually still quite loose. This is where these little bolts underneath come in handy. You're supplied with a spanner. You simply get the spanner, you line it onto the 60 where you need it, and then you tighten the screw underneath on both the pieces like that, which means that now is nice and secure. These I'm gonna turn and you're gonna get nice even corrugations. Is that such a word, corrugations? Microfolds, right. Right, so let's just loosen those off just for a moment. We're using some, some copper today. I've got a piece of, I think this is 0.3 of a millimeter copper. Now the advantage of using a corrugator is that you can get away with quite thin pieces of metal because the corrugation adds a lot of strength to the piece as well, which helps in this day and age with the price of precious metals. So we would introduce the copper into the microfold break. This is quite a thin piece, this is 0.3 of a millimeter. I'll loosen these approximately a quarter of a turn. Come down, let's put, get 70 onto there and put 70 onto there. And I'll introduce the copper into the machine. And I'm doing it squarely. I want the corrugations to be exactly neatly down the piece. So I'm introducing it nice and squarely into the corrugator. And we'll just take it through to the other side. Now, this is 0.3, you can see how lovely that is. This is only 0.3, this went through nice and easy, and you can see how well the corrugations are on the piece there. They're nice and deep, nice and crisp. If you wanted to, you can always turn these thumb screws a little bit tighter. If you want to make sure that the the corrugations were as deep as possible, which you can do. Just come along and just introduce and hang the first part onto one of the, uh, what are these called? Rods, uh, pinions, and come along and do it again and make sure that is really nice and tight. And that's about as deep as we can get the corrugations. So what happens if we want to put through a piece of metal that was slightly thicker? Um, let's have a look, see what we've got here. I've got a piece of metal here, this is 0.7 of a millimeter. This now is quite thick, and I wouldn't expect to pass this bit of metal through the corrugator in one go. We're going to loosen these, my glass on again, I can't see. We're gonna loosen these, let's have a look. Um, a whole turn, shall we? Let's bring that round to naught, naught. Let's see if we can, open these a complete turn. And do you know what? I'd rather start slightly too, um, too loose than too tight. So the idea is make sure you don't have any plastic on the copper or on the material that you're using as well. Because if you do, you're gonna have a heck of a job trying to get it off afterwards. Yep, I've got nothing on this. So we'll introduce it nice and squarely and we'll pass it through. All right, that was quite a thick piece of metal. As you can see here now, it doesn't have very, very deep corrugations. It's just ever so slightly corrugated. So what we need to do is to tighten these up a fraction and we're gonna put it through again. Again, just hooking over the end onto one of these splines there, and we'll take that through once more. There we go. That time, the corrugation is a lot deeper. If you feel that you're not getting a good depth to the corrugation, it is because the metal is being work hardened. So what I'd suggest you do is anneal the piece 
pickle it, dry it, and make sure it is well, well dried, and uh, come back and put it back through the corrugator to get the required amount of corrugation that you require. So that's something that is very, very simple. There are lots of techniques that we can use this corrugator for. As I said, you can tighten one side, have it loose, so when the corrugation goes through, it's slightly fanned. We can also do something that's called a uh, cross corrugation, which I think looks absolutely fabulous. You just saw the first demonstration then on that piece of 0.3 of a millimeter here. Now, what I'm going to do is anneal this piece first of all, because the corrugation has work hardened it. I'm going to anneal it, and I'm going to dry it, and then I'm going to show you what we're going to do. Right, so we've just annealed the piece. I haven't pickled it, admittedly. I've just annealed it. And we've got the corrugations running, obviously, in this direction, which is the direction that it was put through, first of all. But we're now we're going to turn the piece so it's going in at 90 degrees to the original corrugation. What I'm going to have to do, though, is just release these thumb screws an even amount. Uh, let's have a look right round to naught right round to naught, how far is that? Yep, let's do a little bit more. Let's do half, round to 60, round to 60. And I, as I say, it's, it's easier for me, in fact, let me just do those up. It's easier for me to put this through in a couple of goes rather than try and put it through and get the corrugation going in one pass. If you're finding it hard to turn the handle, you're putting the machinery under stress, stop, undo the thumb, the thumb screws, the turn screws, put the piece through because you can always go back through two or three times. Right, so we've got the corrugations running at 90 degrees to these corrugations, and it doesn't have to be 90 degrees, you can put it through at a different angle as well like that there, and I'm just going to turn the handle like that, he says. And you can see how we've got this almost sort of, sort of like a, a wicker work, like a basket work sort of pattern. Let's put it through again, because it's not quite deep enough. So let's have a look. Let's get my calibrations back around to naught, and we'll undo that a whole, what's that do half a turn, shall we? half a turn there and we can hook the piece back onto on the rollers and take it through again a little bit hard perhaps this is a bit too much there we go and you can see now how we've got that that beautiful sort of corrugated look about it that lovely sort of basket weave look and in fact I've done a, a silver piece prior to this as you can see here That, you know, it really is a fabulous, that's a more of a matte side there with highly polished tops and that's a nicely polished piece throughout. And we can make up some fantastic bangle ideas. Uh, this is a quite a thick corrugated piece that's been passed through and it's been shaped using the anti-plastic stakes that we've got the Delrin anti-plastic stakes to produce this lovely anti-plastic look. And then it's simply been shaped into more of, of a cuff. Very simple, very straight on the edge here. Not an awful lot of imagination has gone into this because we just knocked this up very, very quickly. But we can do some fantastic shaping, taper the piece, we can do it synplastic or anti-plastic. So that's the microfold brake. I think it's absolutely fabulous. We've only just touched the surface here of uh, what we can do with it. Um, there's lots more we can do. We're going to do lots of projects and lots of techniques using this in future films on At The Bench. I'm Andrew Berry for At The Bench. Thank you for watching. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.